Good morning and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are in good mind, dear friends. Today is 31st January 2020, and one of the main reason why the Hindu analysis is running behind the schedule today is because I'm not feeling that great. I have got a cold as well as flu, so I'm sorry for the inconvenience. And now, dear friends, we have some important articles on our table. The first one is a trouble or a troubling uh, prescription. This one is about coronavirus and uh, more than that, it is about the stand taken by or the recommendations that are coming from Ayush Ministry and these recommendations are a matter of concern. But before that, I'm not happy with uh, your answers. I can see only two students have replied. Uh, so that is something that is very disappointing. And dear friends, the reason why I ask you questions is because these questions are important for your preparation. Three pillars of China-Myanmar economic corridor. Just a few days ago, we have discussed this topic. I discussed uh, this topic with the help of uh, maps and other things, and I have specifically mentioned both in written as well as in audio form. I have talked about these three forms. So it's very easy question, you know. And if you post these questions, when you post answers of course uh, when you reply to these questions in the comment section it's also a revision that you're doing so it's all you know beneficial for you guys there is no loss i can see and it will j just take what two three minutes or five minutes maximum and if you're not aware about the answer all you have to do is search for it right and then post your answers so it's very simple so I am, you know, I'm taking it very seriously now. And if you are not interested, then do let me know in the comment section. I will drop these questions uh, altogether. But if you really want me to continue this thing, then I uh, would really appreciate your healthy as well as, uh, you know, response in good numbers. With this, dear friends, uh, the first one is about a troubling prescription. As I told you, it's about Ayush Ministry. So first of all, let us uh, go through the full form of Ayush Mantralai. Ministry of Ayurveda. Yoga and Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha, Homeopathy and uh, Sova Rigpa. This is Ayush Ministry. We have a dedicated ministry for all these different branches or traditional branches of medicine. Now, novel coronavirus source 2019 NCOV. We know that uh, it has covered more than 20 countries or regions under it. As far as China is concerned, the numbers are on your screen. 7,711 infected patients. 170 have died so far. And sadly, in India as well, we have one got one case in Kerala. And there are so many countries on your screen. You can I will qu quickly take you through it. Australia, Cambodia, Japan, Malaysia, Nepal, Philippines, Singapore, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam. Canada, USA, Finland, France, Germany, UAE. There are so many flights. Uh, they have cancelled their routes. So many flights, right? So costing billions of dollars uh, of loss. Then you have all those businesses uh, that are exporting things to Wuhan and all these different places. They have stopped their exports. Uh, imports are from Wuhan and other areas are stopped as well. So supply chain of so many companies been affected so many people's uh, you know livelihood uh, will get affected and as you can see here you have some medical terminologies on your screen so coronavirus anatomy anatomy basically means a shape is like a spike and a wheel so spike glycoprotein affects the way the virus binds to a host cell and infects it rna that is viral Ribo, uh, ribonuclear acid carries a genetic blueprint and capsid protein shell protects RNA. So here you have some medical terminologies. If you are preparing for exams uh, that are associated with the medical field, then this sort of technical things or this terminologies you should understand and uh, should be on your fingertips. Now, Ministry of Ayush. Why we are talking about uh, this ministry here? Because it has published a misleading advisory. First one. What it has said is that uh, certain Unani medicines uh, for uh, symptomatic management of coronavirus infection and certain Ayurvedic practices and homeopathy medicines 
to help prevention the infection now ayush ministry is claiming that uh, there are unani medicines uh, that can cure this symptomatic management or can be helpful in symptomatic Uh, management of this infection and the second thing is that uh, it is also saying that ayurvedic practices or homeopathy medicines can help prevent the infection now this is a virus first of all we have to understand and it is uh, spreading quite widely as we know and here our ministry is claiming that it can prevent infection now the first thing is that this is a very new virus right there is no drug to the specifically uh, there is no drug to specifically target this new corona virus and our ministry is claiming that uh, it can prevent this homeopathy or ayurvedic practices can p- prevent it so that's a very sad thing that's a very unscientific way of looking at this virus Now at present uh, all those uh, patients who are suffering from this uh, virus they are being provided with the symptomatic treatment and the other sad thing is that uh, Ayush ministry's recommendation is highly irresponsible and dangerous because it has not cared to list the symptoms and our symptoms are on your screen as you can see right so let's quickly go through it uh, fever chest pain chills uh, rapid uh, heartbeat uh, breathing difficulties pneumonia kidney failure and most important thing it can spread from one human being to another by sneezing or coughing so it's a bit of problem and second thing is that it has not mentioned which specific medicine uh, should be taken if a particular symptom is noticed so there is lack of clarity uh, from ayush ministry and it is you know talking about big things here so this is very irresponsible and it is also quite contrary to what ministry of health and family welfare is suggesting now this ministry health ministry is saying that if we find any person affected with this corona virus then that particular person should be quickly isolated so that uh, uh, this spread of this virus can be limited or we can control it but uh, just imagine a situation where a person is following ayush ministry's recommendations if a person is affected with this coronavirus and that person is roaming around freely going to gym and school or classes or other places this person this carrier will affect so many people because of this misleading information from ayush mantralaya so it's a very sad thing and it should refrain uh, from from this sort of big claims right it's not good for people and public health So that's everything so dear friends before we move ahead i would like to introduce all of you to our pen drive and tablet courses uh, they are designed by the best faculties of our nation and uh, our pen drive and tablet courses have helped uh, so many students uh, to crack various different competitive exams you can purchase them from studyiq.com dear friends to download the pdf of today's lecture do visit my fb page you can follow me on fb you can join my telegram channel make sure you share this lecture with other students and thanks to all those uh, students who are sharing it on a regular basis uh, right so i really really appreciate your efforts uh, and uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you have learned something from today's discussion the sec- second topic that we have is for the rural poor a manufactured crisis and this article is talking about this npr nrc that is national population register national register of citizens and this article is saying that this exercises are conducted at a time when our country particularly rural area is going through distress nso that is national statistical office it comes out with uh, consumer expenditure survey cse now pay attention consumer expenditure name itself indicates that this particular cse or this report will contain or from the name we can judge that it will have details about how people are spending so cse contains details about the spending patterns of households now data collected from this and this is very important why we need data why data is important it is important because if we have a proper data if we have a clear information clear picture then we can plan things you can plan ahead you can uh, you know do budgetary allocations uh, like how much money is required for this department or for that department and things like that so csc contains details about all the spending patterns of household 
and it comes out uh, this nso comes out with this csc every five years now the sad thing is that the central government uh, suppressed the release of the most recent survey data from 2017-18 uh, this data was accessed by a news organization called Business Standard and as per Business Standard, consumer spending, as per this particular report, consumer spending fell for the first time in 40 years. So household spending, when household spending is down, that means people are buying less things. When they are buying less things, then naturally the demand is, we can understand that demand has dropped and when demand uh, has dropped then of course uh, the supply will drop as well because uh, uh, you know people are not buying your things so producers will 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 uh, control uh, the quantity of production and gradually it will lead us to a very pessimist situation and that's what we are going through at present a report has been published by Professor S. Subramaniam. The title is The Indian Forum and it compares the monthly per capita consumption expenditure from the CSC 2011-12 and 2017-18. And it presents a very grim picture, very bleak and dark picture of rural India. According to this article, uh, this article basically it has divided the uh, people in 10 different uh, you can say categories right from the poorest to the richest so we have this 10 groups and it's quite interesting to know that if we go through all the groups right then we find that consumption of all these groups have declined income of all these groups have declined and uh, for example the average monthly consumption levels of the poorest 50% of the rural population was 1138 in 2011 12 and it has dropped to 1,082 in 2017-18. And same thing applies with the richest as well, that uh, their income as well as their uh, uh, spending has uh, decreased. Uh, so in simple words, we can say that more people have become poorer and hence they have less money to spend. And when they have less money to spend, that means demand is dropping or taking a nose dive. The government had kept uh, delaying the release of 2017-18 periodic labor force survey, PLFS, and remember it became a big controversy. And, and you know, it's quite natural, and that's what we expect. If you if you are hiding data, then it is going to become a big controversy when people will know that you are hiding it for a purpose. Because if we go through this PLFS data, then we find that. Uh, under this BJP-led government, unemployment has reached a 45-year high and that's a very sad thing. Again, people are not having jobs or they are not finding a source of income. That means uh, they will spend less and that's what you find when people will stop spending. Again, demand and supply and then, you know, new investment will we find a halt in new investment. And uh, then we find this sort of big figures, you know, economy not moving ahead or growing at a slow pace. The most, uh, I would say, sinister thing about uh, this government, uh, as far as this data is concerned, is that the government responded that the leaked report was just a draft report and didn't uh, release the data until after the general election of 2019. So that's a very, you can say, sinister thing that government has done. And... At present, what we are finding in, in recent past, you know, all these vegetables and fruit items, uh, retail inflation uh, skyrocketed. And uh, we, 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 our, our people are, are facing this twin evils of low income. On one side, employment is down. And on the other side, food inflation, food prices are quite high. So how it will affect a poor family? A poor family will be left with no option, but they have to cut down on necessary items as well, like food. If they are eating two chapatis, then they have to satisfy themselves with just one chapati per person. You can just imagine, when it comes to fruits and vegetables, all those items, necessary milk and other things, uh, they can afford all these things for everyone. So food consumption will go down. When food consumption will do go down, nutrition or will get affected so we'll find more cases of malnutrition this will affect their growth their understanding their potential we find a poor family will be spending more and they will get into this vicious cycle of poverty and debt and all these things so this article is uh, you know emphasizing on this thing that on one side we find that uh, rural wages uh, you know are dropping and payment uh, of mg narega 
uh, is not on time and government is uh, wasting its money after this citizenship and national population register and all these things. Uh, as per one estimate, uh, this NPR will cost us 4,000 crore rupees and if we spend this 4,000 crore rupees after MG Narega, then we can support 2.2 crore landless labor for 100 days. And uh, this article is also saying that uh, women in particular would pay a huge price as they relocate after marriage and hence don't have uh, the relevant documents. Now when the central government can't get cash transfers correct for rural women under PM Matru Vandana Yojana program, then how we can expect that under this NPR and NRC things will be all right. Now, of course, this article is uh, very critical on this NPR and NCR, and uh, I must say that uh, yes, uh, this writer has uh, you know published or has written some factual points about it, no doubt. But we have to also keep this thing in mind that government means government will not just focus on one thing. We have various different departments. It's all about division of work. So if MG Narega, if payments, if people are not receiving their payments or wages under MG Narega, then there are ways to sort it out and we should focus on those things. If uh, demand is not, uh, you know, yesterday we were talking about this uh, MG Narega, why it should be, you know, it's a horizon. Um, can be widened uh, by, by adding uh, semi-skilled and uh, skilled work uh, work under it. So we can do that. Uh, we can uh, we have all these technologies as well today. Direct benefit transfers and other things. Uh, verification processes are more robust today. Then there is no excuse why government is not able to deliver things on time. Or when I say t uh, things, I am talking about wages on time. So this can be improved. At the same time, if government is thinking that this NPR and NRC is very important, right, then it can do this thing simultaneously as well. So basically, it's all about management and uh, government should, of course, focus on rural poor at present. Uh, if we want to revive our economy, and there are so many economists, uh, they have said the same thing, that if we want to revive, then we have to work on the demand side. We can boost demand, and for that we have to support uh, poor people, and particularly people living in rural areas. So I hope uh, things are clear. Now let's talk about a, a deliverance. Uh, this one is about a very important law. Now central government has extended the limit of medical termination of pregnancy, of basically abortion, to 20 weeks. Earlier on it was limited to 20, uh, I beg your pardon, 24 weeks, right? Earlier on it was limited to 20 weeks only. So now it has been extended to 24 weeks. Now why this is a big thing? Because fetal anamory scan is done during 20th and 21st week of pregnancy. So if something is wrong with the baby inside the womb of the mother, then you will come to know about it uh, around 20th and 21st week. And if the limit, the threshold is limited to 20 weeks, then just imagine uh, the condition of that mother um, was just uh, realized or just found out that uh, the baby um, in her tummy is not well and uh, then on the other side she cannot go for an abortion so and even if she wants to then there are so many legal routes and you know you have to go through all this you know ups and downs and it's very expensive and you have limited time so the government has uh, showed its uh, sensitivity uh, here by, by extending this uh, limit from 20 weeks to 24 weeks. Now, there are doctors, uh, they have said that because of this limited amount or early on when you were having just 20 weeks uh, and, you know, under this uh, desperation, there were so many families, they went ahead with this unsafe abortion services. And because of these things, uh, there are so many because of this unsafe abortion, uh, so many, uh, so many women they they passed away because of this thing. Uh, they they died, and those who have survived, they have they are not in good uh, shape. The extension of a limit would ease the process uh, for these women, allowing the mainstream system itself to take care of them, delivering quality medical attention. Now, the question of abortion needs to be decided on basis of three things. The first one is human rights. The human rights are clearly mentioned in our constitution as well as in the United Nations. The second thing, the principles of solid science. Everything that you do, like abortion or no abortion, should be based on 
this uh, principle of solid science and the third thing is advancements in technology we have to keep in mind the advancement of technologies as well now it's a very very famous case of uh, u.s supreme court and landmark judgment of u.s supreme court it's called roy versus uh, wade uh, the judges held that the u.s constitution protects a women's or a woman's right uh, to terminate uh, her pregnancy and defined uh, viability as uh, potentially the ability to live outside the mother's womb albeit with artificial aid here the word viability is important viability basically means that a baby uh, can survive outside uh, mother's womb uh, under this artificial condition so that's what viability is earlier on viability was you know it means viability is usually a period of about seven months at 28 weeks but many a times it occurs even at 24 weeks as well so we cannot have a rigidity here we have to provide a flexibility uh, 24 weeks or 20 weeks to 28 weeks or maybe 24 weeks to 28 weeks uh, we need to provide this uh, uh, window and it's very important because every case is different uh, so nations uh, they have to decide their outer limit and uh, it should be based on uh, their capacity of health system now at present india has decided to go ahead with 24 weeks uh, so it is important that we create all norms and standardize uh, procedures uh, protocols as well as every single doctor should be educated on this thing every pregnant lady should be educated on this thing they should be well aware about their rights and legal options and other things so it is very important that now once you know government has decided now it's our focus should be on spreading awareness about it now dear friends other articles that you find on the hindu this one is pure political article and so is this one so i've dropped uh, these two articles and i have found a very interesting article written by smriti irani here and uh, she's our minister as we all know and uh, this article is written by our minister women and child development so you can take it as official statement by government of india and this sort of articles are important so if you find any article that is written by a a current uh, 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 current minister then take it as very important and you will find so many facts uh, from that article you know so it's coming directly from that ministry so here it's talking about the same topic that we were talking right it's about pregnancy and abortion so medical termination of pregnancy act 1971 it used to look after all the things regarding abortion now we had a very sad case in our country a brutally raped minor was forced to give birth to her rapist's child after a high court denied her request for abortion at uh, 24 at 19 weeks uh, you know she went to a doctor and of course uh, she was traumatized uh, but uh, doctors were not happy or they said a big no for abortion even the legal limit was 20 weeks uh, the doctors said no so uh, this minor she went to you know courts but by time uh, a thing was decided it was already late a 20 week limit was crossed and the court said that now they can do nothing about it and this is not a single case we find so many cases like this in our country a 2015 study in the indian journal of medical ethics has observed that 10 to 13 percent of med uh, maternal deaths in india can be attributed to unsafe abortions and uh, if we roughly translate it then we find that six to seven women die every day in our country uh, because of this unsafe abortions right and those who survive they are also in not uh, a good shape they live with pain forever they become infertile uh, sepsis and other internal injuries are quite common and studies have also showed that 20 week limit uh, was based on uh, the things that used to you know that we used to know back in 1970s and today we are living in what 2020 so it's already more than 50 years now and uh, medical science has improved as well we have abortion pills we have uh, a vacuum aspiration and other things so there is no reason that uh, we should rely on this 1970s knowledge we have to upgrade ourselves and back in 2003 as well who has developed technical as well as policy guidelines uh, to help governments pass progressive abortion laws so finally cabinet has decided to approve this mtp amendment bill 2020 
and uh, pay attention here the bill allows abortion up to 24 weeks of gestational age for vulnerable categories of women and there is no limit for gestational age in case of pregnancies with substantial fetal abnormalities diagnosed by a medical board. So this is very interesting and very important and it's going to be a game changer for uh, as far as maternal health is concerned. Worldwide abortion is acknowledged as an important aspect of reproductive health of women. There are some 26 countries including Egypt, Angola, Thailand, Philippines, Madagascar and Iraq. They they don't allow uh, abortions at all. There are 39 countries, including Brazil, Mexico, Sudan, Indonesia, our neighbor Sri Lanka. They permit abortion when a woman's life is at risk. And there are only a few countries like China, Russia, Canada, Australia, South Africa. They permit abortion on request, mostly up to 12 weeks only. But here, India has uh, gone with 24 weeks and it will put us that high table amongst uh, nations that look after their women a lot very well and uh, this is a very high uh, or you can say highly progressive law uh, that has got a green light from our cabinet so congratulations to our country now news uh, we have uh, some important news uh, slogan shouting shooter injuries uh, jamia student and it's a very sad thing a person holding a gun he fired a gun as well and one student got injuries because of this gunfire it's about NTCAA protest uh, Supreme Court rejects a curative plea in Nirbhaya case uh, address EU's concern on CAA has been said by envoy of UK he said that uh, India should address uh, the concerns of uh, European Union HAL that is uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and its uh, products uh, will be displayed uh, in this uh, defense expo they just Light combat aircraft and light combat helicopter will be displayed and Gandhiji's killing. It's a book, uh, The Assassination of Mahatma Gandhi, Trial and Verdict, not, uh, verdict in 1948-49. And it is, uh, you know, it is published by the Hindu newspaper and it was launched by M.S. Swaminathan. And that's everything in today's uh, discussion, dear friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for sharing this video and talking about this uh, analysis with uh, other students. Uh, dear friends, as I told you that I am not feeling that great today. I have got flu and uh, uh, fever as well as uh, cold. So um, I beg your pardon if I'm not feeling that energetic today. Uh, yesterday's daily financial news analysis, I was not able to deliver it. I was not able to record it. So I am going to... Uh, you know post it for you guys I'm going to record and finish it and will bring it out uh, today itself as far as 31st or today's uh, I'm talking about yesterday's yesterday's will come out 100% today uh, today's I'm not sure if I feel good um, around evening time then definitely yes I will bring it out today as well so there is no backlog so thank you very much for your support and love God bless you all Jai Hind